Well, I'm not happy. I'm not happy one bit, and I know that most of you aren't either. Of course, welcome in to the PHNX D-backs post-game show right here on PHNX. It's presented to you by our friends at Desert Financial Credit Union, Arizona's number one credit union named by Forbes. Uh, my name is Derek Montia, occasionally known as one of the Mario brothers. I'll let you decide which one I look like more so. Uh, this man next to me is a coward that would not dress in a red uh, long sleeve shirt and uh, overalls next to me, but I respect it still. It's the one and only Patty Plantain, a.k.a. Patrick Lyons, from our friends at DNVR. This one sucked, Patrick. This one sucked. Yeah. I really feel like the end result really makes it hurt even worse. The Diamondbacks lose tonight by a score of 11-7 to in a game where the bullpen uh, start did not work. The bullpen experiment did not work, at least on their end of things, because uh, things went very wrong very quickly for this bullpen. Joe Mantiply came out in the first inning, did his job, did everything he was supposed to do. Then he comes back out. And it's like, right then, right? Right then was a moment in the second inning where it just felt like that was a bad decision. And of course, uh, it didn't work out. Uh, he gives up a hit to uh, Josh Jung, and then he ends up getting pulled, I think, after he gets the next, the following out. I get, think he got Nathaniel Lowe. Right, which is why he was in there, right? The announcers were, were saying, hey, just Lowe. get through the first four, right? Because yeah. you got Evan Carter, yep. uh, the left hander left-handed hitter batting fourth and so he gets that done you go that's probably it but tory probably saying we might be able to squeeze two more outs maybe one and, yeah. and does squeeze that one more and so you can even i think probably say hey mantiply you did your job even if that runs in that that runner on second base ends up scoring that's that's fine because we said as yeah. long as you can keep this to a one-run game in the early going you have a chance to win this bullpen game that's what was so frustrating about this is they absolutely did not do that. And then uh, Castro comes in. Ma Joe Mantiply, uh, Miguel Castro, Kyle Nelson, Luis Frias combined for 10 runs allowed in three innings of work. Uh, three innings of work, not all earned runs, but still that's when all of the runs scored and that's who they ran, uh, the runs were against. Uh, and of course, it's ridiculously frustrating because the D-backs offense went on to put up seven runs yeah no matter what the outcome no matter how bad it was early on if the bullpen could have just held things a little bit tighter than combining for 10 runs allowed in three innings of work uh this could be a different game right uh they didn't start ryan nelson and ryan nelson ended up being incredibly good in this game five and one third innings pitched gave up three hits one earned run no walks struck out six Mm -hmm. In a World Series game, give it up for Ryan Nelson, right? But it's pretty good. A big part of the frustration there is Ryan Nelson was a starter. The D backs were in need of a starter. Joe Mantiply, to his credit, has done his job, but hasn't been very sharp. You know, he hasn't been sharp enough that you say, I guess, in the same way that you would want Ryan Thompson, Kevin Ginkle, Paul Seawald in a game where you have the lead and you know you can trust those guys. I don't feel that same way about Joe Mantiply, uh, but I, I think that Ryan Nelson proved tonight that, I mean, he obviously, he it, it looked like he was the route that they should have gone to start the game because he gave them essentially an actual start. Yeah, he, he was fantastic. Uh, five and a third innings pitch, as you said, only gave up the one run. Uh, in fact, in, in World Series history, the last guy to go five innings or more and give up one or less runs was... Uh, his teammate, Madison Bumgarner, in Game 7 of the 2014 World Series. So yep. it's been a, quite a while since we've seen a relief performance that good. But the Diamondbacks haven't been really been using Ryan Nelson. And so I, yeah. I, I don't think you could have... I don't think anyone necessarily would have predicted something like this would have happened. Was it also a matter of the Rangers maybe taking their foot off the gas pedal just a little it, it bit with those... Yeah, it could with, have been some garbage time runs for yeah. sure. And, yeah, and, and, and so... They have those back-to-back five-run innings. And as you're saying, you could look at it in a different way and say, wait a minute. Diamondbacks put up seven runs. And sure, Jonah Heim had that home run late uh, in the eighth inning. And that was the, the lone run that Ryan Nelson gave up. And you say, well, if one of those five-run innings doesn't happen, do the math. Diamondbacks win 7-6. This series is tied at two. As it were, the reality that we live in right now. <laughs> the uh, actual time. Diamondbacks that are we're down in. three one yeah. Uh, yeah. on what is the the first 
Diamondbacks uh, game on Halloween. So unfortunately, it is a bit of a nightmare on Jefferson Street. It is. Uh, no Adolis Garcia for the Texas Rangers. No problem. Yeah. Jankowski comes in, goes uh, two for four. I, I think he might have been updated. I, I, my notes might be behind, but uh, I mean, he was just incredible. Yeah, two for four. Two for four. Two RBI. Yeah, two RBI. That, that double. double. Two runs scored. Uh, yeah, he was an, an outstanding replacement for Garcia, and we kind of predicted that would happen because that's what happens, especially with the unknown. You know, kind of like what we saw in, in Game Three, where you know Max Scherzer leaves the game, and you know. Credit to John Snow. He's been. I did it again. John Gray. Jonathan I, Gray. Jonathan. Jonathan. You, you need to call him Jonathan, Jonathan so you don't make the John well, Snow. Jonathan thing. Gray. Uh, it, he it was very good. Uh, and I think a part of that is the fact that the Diamondbacks weren't, you know, I'm obviously weren't ready to face a bullpen game uh, today. Tori Lavello thought he could do it with with his bullpen, and they could not. I, I mean, of course, uh, you're not going to use. You know Kevin Ginkle in the second inning. You're not no. going to use uh, T. Time Ryan Thompson up there. You're hoping that you get to use those guys later on once you do have a lead in a bullpen game like this. But still, it's just uh, you know again, uh, Mantiply Castro. They've they've done their job at times. I mean, Luis Frias has been very good at this team. Ryan Nelson, uh, Kyle Nelson has been solid at times when called upon. But uh, today, those guys just couldn't get the job done. No, no, it 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 was uh it was unfortunate because, you know, and I think we saw it on on both sides for for both teams, players who are in the midst of a breakout or players who have been really quiet, and you say, "There's no way that this person can stay quiet." Marcus Simeon has been that guy this entire series. Yep. he ends up breaking out yeah. with a two for five game, five RBI, and the guy that you know was in the center of a lot of the speculation, uh, and it needed to be dropped in the order. Some people even saying, "Oh." Get him out of first base altogether for completely forgetting about, you know, how much value he provides defensively at first base. But Christian Walker goes out and has himself a great day. Yes. Uh, everyone in the starting lineup got a base hit except Alec Thomas and Emmanuel Rivera. They out hit the Rangers 12 to 11. They out hit the Rangers, sure. Marte, crazy. Moreno, and Guriel all had two hits apiece. But Christian Walker led the way with three hits, uh, in, including a double. So he was primed to break out. You started to see it in game two, even though the results weren't there. Tori Lovello and his staff, <laughs> knowing what they know, and, and as good as they've been this postseason, said, let's stick with this guy. He's going to be really good. There was that point uh, early on in the in the game where um, it was what it was the first inning where he had a squandered opportunity. Marte, Lead-off single yep. that doesn't make you sweat it out uh, until the final at bat. That's when he like extended, the other night. That's when he extended his hitting streak to twenty games now in the postseason. And let's not forget that uh, four of those games did come in twenty seventeen. So he has a sixteen game hit streak just this postseason alone. That's actually now the most in any single uh, uh, postseason. Uh, a sixteen game hit streak for that. So he gets the leadoff single. Unfortunately, uh, he gets. He gets caught stealing there and takes the, the bat out of Walker's hands. And you say, ah, that would have been a nice opportunity to get an early lead. And, and maybe that changes the outcome just a little bit. Am I crazy? Are there comments about Corbin or, or about Christian Walker not having a good day? The man went Couldn't three be. for five, right? Yeah. I mean, three for five. I don't know what more you could ask. I think he people are mad about the defensive mistake. Oh, well, the guy, the guy who's that led to runs incredibly solid yeah it ended up being ruled the fielder's choice but at the same time you're like okay yeah and and you could see it on his face he was you know a little bit disappointed on yeah. that i think that was you know it, even if even if you make a play on that and you can't get the double play you're still going to get the guy at first base yeah. or maybe you're going to get the, you get one out there on that and so uh, i do understand that but that is a singular play for a guy who will more than likely win his second ever gold glove so yeah. Sure, that that's one of the that's one of the symptoms I think of of today's game. But when you're down ten nothing at one point and potentially like an all time drubbing, you know there's there's a lot of things that ended up going wrong to to kind of put you in that predic that predicament. Yeah, the, the offense, you know, it wasn't there early, and you can argue definitely that the Rangers with the lead they had probably uh, took their foot off the gas a little bit, but sure. still. Uh, they showed up, I mean, at, late in, in the game. And hopefully, I guess if you want to look on the bright side of things or try to at least look on the bright side, is that hope that these, you know, that that can carry over to the next game because that's really yeah. what the Diamondbacks need at this point. They face elimination and they can't go down early like like they did. I think Elise said it earlier. You can't 
go down 10 runs before you record the first nine outs. You're not going to win baseball games that way, especially in the World Series. But uh, the offense, again, it didn't really matter. They were in such a hole at that point. It felt relatively impossible. Uh, we finally got a little bit of hope, I think, there at the end, just yeah. enough just enough to make us maybe believe and then not really uh, you know, get it done. There's but. a lot of silver linings, I think, and, and we can maybe get to that that later, but there there are silver linings, uh, I think, just about in any loss. And when you, you only lose by four, right, when it certainly was much worse, and Jose Leclerc, I think that's a big one, that Bruce Bochy had to go out and use his closer yeah. again yeah. just to get the final out. And I think you even saw after the final out, Marcus, Marcus Simeon, Simeon yeah, he was, he was like, like Shoot, that's uh, I can't believe it. It, it was that much. Yeah. Shoot, is right. what, I also, just, if I was quoting him, I could yeah. say just about anything. You can say it, yeah. You were quoting him, you're right. That a boy, dumb like the... guy, yeah. You know, right. that, that quote, too. We'll, we'll get, we'll get him out of you. The craziest part, too, about what the Rangers were able to do is they scored all 10 of those runs, right? The two five run innings, they did all of that with two outs. That's probably the craziest yeah. part is that they did that. And that's, that's the saddest part. In sure. the second inning, they they actually end up hitting for the cycle for only the 10th time the in World cycle. Series history. Yeah. Yeah. Team cycle, right? It's only and, and the first time it's happened since 1991. Uh, so that one is yeah. kind of wild. Uh, Corey Seager stays hot, right? Hits his third home run of the World Series, most ever by a shortstop in a single World Series. Now has 19 postseason home runs. Trails only Derek Jeter all time with his 20 home runs. It's actually the 15th straight playoff game for the Rangers uh, with a home run extending their longest such streak in a single postseason. Not great because you want to kind of quiet them a little bit to get momentum. Like, the loss in game four and, and or excuse me, loss in game three. And, and this was something that, you know, I, I was hoping we talk about, like, which of these losses is is the worst, right? Like the game one loss, oh, you, the win was within your grasp. Game three, you're like, man, if that ump, man, if a couple things kind of went our way, you could have had that one. This one, you couldn't have won it, but it's a little bit more painful. I don't, I don't know exactly where I, I think this they would one's, rank. This one's a little bit more blame free, you know. Like last sure. night's game was a close game, so that game in Game Three, those those calls mattered, right? More. It's kind of like I saw some Rangers fans saying right. that they didn't get the calls in Game Two, which the umpire scorecard didn't really didn't suggest suggest that, that no. there was an eight, you know, run swing. But at the same time, like I get it. The, then and the point here really wasn't like oh this umpire sucks because he's making bad calls just against the Diamondbacks. No, this umpire sucks because he sucks. Yeah, he sucks because he sucks. The, and if and if if you're in the thing saying yeah, well they sucked in game two, it's like yeah, that's the problem is that this is the World Series and the umpire shouldn't be this much of a factor, especially in a close game like that. Uh, this one though is more on I guess the game planning. I'm a bit more frustrated okay. with the fact that ryan nelson didn't get the start i'm i'm a, i think things could have gone differently had they had nelson go out there and be able to hypothetically do sure. what he did uh for his line to start the game go five and a third give up one earned run no walk six strikeouts i think it would have set the tone i think maybe it would have allowed the diamondbacks to make maybe they're able to muster up some runs and get a lead maybe that's the difference maker you know i don't i don't know I don't know, you know, how things would factor out differently if they would have gone with Ryan Nelson. But what I think is, is that Joe may had to apply, uh, you know, it, the, the plan was the plan and it seemed to work out in the first inning and the minute, you know, it kind of deviated from the plan. I felt like that's where it set things on a different path. When Mantiply comes back out to start the second inning, if you wanted somebody that was going to be able to go longer than an inning, give you an inning plus, give you two, give you three innings. Ryan Nelson was right there the whole time. It'll be interesting to see what Tori has to say about that. If he said, well, I mean, maybe we, we counted this guy out just a little bit or what, what Ryan himself will say yeah. about his performance. Maybe there was something that Lavella missed and say, eh, maybe we should have trusted this guy or given him an opportunity at a, at a different spot to see, sure. you know, what, what he had exactly. Um, Dana and I were talking about it last night. It, it the game one loss was probably the worst because that was within your grasp, right? That one you I had think, had the lead. You had the lead. You were so close to winning. After it. today, especially, I'm saying 100% game one hurts the most. Yeah. And game I, three, despite how you know frustrating it was for the umpire, you still could have won that game even without the umpire yeah, you didn't yeah. show doing up. those things. Yeah. And then game four, you just got beat. You yeah. just got beat. That's, that's a true loss. Looking back on it, it's like, yeah, the games that we beat them, 
I want those games because yeah. it could be two apiece right now if it was like who played better in, in each game. Why do yeah. this to us on Halloween? Dope Solo says worst Halloween ever. Look at him. It's Look Halloween at what Havoc. He did. Yeah, Halloween it's Havoc. Halloween Havoc. I hate it. Uh, my daughter is 12. This is probably the last year that she is going to trick or treat. You know, she's going to go off and do teenager things next year, and that's going to definitely not involve trick or treating. Uh, and I get to miss that. So I could watch these guys get beat up in this World Series. Like, that's that's the things I get for all the years of parenting that I put in. I and here see. you are, dressed up I as see. Luigi. Trying. I'm trying to have fun. I didn't go. To, I didn't get to go to any parties, Patrick. So I was too busy covering the Diamondbacks in the postseason. One of the best parties. Why didn't they think of me? Why didn't they think of Damon? Huh, Damon? Look at this poor guy. He, yeah, has, it's, he it's, has he has Jesse Jr. on his neck right now. He's not he even does. on set. He's not on my neck because he's comforting That's Damon great. after this loss. By the it way, is, and, and look at this poor guy. He literally has the L on his I'm head I'm taking right now. the L. We should have known that th that we was a problematic known. costume so immediately so out of the gate. I should have taken that Wario child costume because... You would have brought the W. I would have brought the W. You would have brought ah! the W. You, you idiot. Okay, ah. it's actually back on me now. Yeah, good. Damn. I'm glad it is. I'm glad it is. Well, 11 uh, seven. Another, another, well, since we're blaming people and scolding <laughs> people, we should probably scold the fans that decided to start throwing paper airplanes. What's that about? Yeah, that's a classless move, man. That's yeah. a bad look. It's a bad move. I get it. You're down. You paid a lot of money to sit, most likely, because where those paper airplanes were coming from is like nosebleed section. So you play, paid a lot of money to go watch your team. And you and bought those sit. seats because that was probably like that's that was a st real stretch yeah right like I mean, you just want to get in the door you just want to get in the like door the cheapest you just wanted to see your team are probably compete and the then they're expensive. down within the blink of an eye by 10 runs yeah i mean while i can't condone throwing paper airplanes i can understand it at least it wasn't beer cans hey, you know the Maybe? material these papers that you're using it's probably i imagine it's like programs and such that are there like oh, heavy things. cardstock yeah heavy cardstock you're gonna program. poke someone's goddamn eye out no what are you doing a, no it's using a program yeah those are like 15 20 and you're right? not using yeah, a no. ticket because paper tickets don't exist those don't exist so anymore. what what was that actually that they were even throwing my guess would be these monsters were probably making it out of the stand up for cancer things that they were putting in the seats that would be my Ooh. guess that yeah, not great be, not great that's a good cardstock though for not that great. yeah um yeah i'll blame the fans uh because the diamondbacks <laughs> players weren't the ones throwing the paper airplanes but it's classless you're better than that come on it's like throwing stuff on the field you guys are better than that um but what i will also say is that Cattell Marte uh is better than most people at baseball and for that reason he is our king snake tonight hey. Cattell Marte with his 20 game postseason hit streak honestly there's a Thank lot of you. guys that deserve it tonight and a lot of guys that don't we could have given this sure. to nobody we could have given it to Christian Walker because as much as uh, as much as I guess I'd probably not Christian Walker, but still offensively <laughs> that man was able to come out of it. So you could have uh, made the case uh, for Lourdes Gurriel, uh, who did end up having, uh, you know, did have a he did have the home run, uh, Mister Meaningless home run, any ending double play See? in the six that kind of cut short a rally <laughs> when Walker and Sam when Walker and Fam had singles uh, with one out. That was obviously unfortunate, but uh, he does uh, hit that home run. Four RBI for him, first time in the World Series since Kyle Tucker did it last year. And first time for an Arizona Diamondback since Game 6 in 2001. This gentleman had five RBI. How about Danny Bautista? Mm. Ooh. I love Danny They're Bautista. They're saying Bautista. <laughs> Bautista. They're not booing him. Bautista. Well, uh... <laughs> I haven't had to do this in a while, but uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, we got to we got to do something about those first uh, three innings, or at least okay. the second and third inning. And I am giving the second and third inning of Game Four of the World Series my OG's performance to forget. Oh, Damon, you ready? <laughs> it's the performance. You ready? We got to do it together here. It's the performance, performance to forget. Forget, forget, forget. Yeah. Forget, forget. Uh, because we definitely want to forget uh, those two innings for sure. Second and third inning. Goodbye. Yeah. But a great way to do that is with our friends at OG's Brands, by the way. With the World Series drama going on and the holidays right around the corner, things are getting hectic, uh, especially when those two combine for on one day. On one day. So uh, definitely, definitely. 
Uh, thank our buds at OG's Brands. They are back with exclusive deals for PHNX listeners, and they made it super easy for you to score these savings. Get 25% off any OG's products at your neighborhood Zen Leaf location from now until November 30th. Uh, when you place an order online and use our code of PHNX at checkout, just head to zenleafdispensaries.com, find your closest location, order your favorite OG's gummies for pickup, and enter discount code PHNX. That is our gift to you on this day. Uh, hopefully this helps get you over tonight's loss. The deal is exclusive to our PHNX listeners. And reminder, it's available only for online pickup orders. So make sure you use that option. Discount code PHNX is active once again until November 30th. Uh, we thank you guys for being here in the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. Of course, uh, you have, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do so right now. Sign up for notifications. That way you don't miss when any of our wonderful shows go live. And do what Gabby would do. Uh, even, even though Gabby hasn't been hitting pretty well himself in the World Series, drop us a like. Uh, we appreciate that from you. We appreciate that from Gabby. Uh, if you're listening on the audio podcasting side, make sure you subscribe to us there. Leave us a review. We always appreciate those five-star reviews. Uh, a great place to spend some time after all of this World Series drama is over is at Gila River Resorts and Casinos right here in town. Uh, of course, we're very excited to partner with Gila Re River Resorts and Casinos. It's Arizona's biggest and bet best resorts and casinos and uh yeah if you need a vacation forget vacations just do a staycation uh, there's so many great places to have a staycation here in town but gila river resorts and casinos might be the absolute best and even when you're not staying there you can sign up uh for some fun free games online for a chance to win one million dollars in cash sign up for their big red showdown stay in the game and get rewards it's that easy they also have weekly pickums where you can win up to a thousand dollars in free bonus play every week they also have monthly drawings on November 5th and December 3rd for things like Cardinals game tickets, memorabilia, and free bonus play prop cards for select football games. So do not miss out on all of that. Can win up to $100,000 in cash. Must be 21 and over only. Visit GilaMillionDollarShowdown.com to get in on the action. For more information on Gila River Resorts and Casinos and all they have to offer, head to PlayAtGila.com. All right. Well, uh, let's take a look at the unfortunate updated bracket here tonight because this is not great. The Diamondbacks are, in fact, uh, facing elimination tomorrow night here at Chase Field. So we must protect the pool. Oh, must gotta. protect the pool. Uh, gotta. You want to know the numbers on uh, coming back from a 3-1 deficit? Yeah. All right. So... According to Sarah Langs, in all best of seven postseason series in baseball history, teams holding a 3 1 edge have gone on to win that series 78 out of 92 times. So that's 85%. So there's a 15% chance. When you look back on history, that being said, the Diamondbacks do not care about your dumb history. <laughs> they will fight back. Uh, there are sure. six different teams that have actually come back from a 3 1 deficit in the World Series. And four of those six actually did it with wins on the road in Game 6 and Game 7. Most recently, the 2016 Chicago Cubs, which featured all of those young 23 and under players that hit home runs the year prior, which is a, a team and a roster that these Diamondbacks have actually bested with all of their home runs from players 23 and under, which I think we're up to 13 now. Maybe it's still at 12, but still, <laughs> uh, I find that to be, you know, pretty interesting. And, and the Diamondbacks have been doing this the entire season. And I yep. think now, you know, previously it was, eh, yeah, kind of just happy to be here. And, yeah. oh, well, that's all right. We we got pretty far. And now being so close, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And it's 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 the shine coming off of the commissioner's trophy, right? It's it's a gleam of gold. It's not just a, a light to, to survive. It's It's something much bigger than that. And so I think it's it's obviously disappointing and frustrating to be down 3-1 yep. in this predicament. But this team has done it before. Tomorrow is just one game. They're going to win that, and we kind of go from there. But, um, yeah, unfortunately disappointing. 3-1, despite the fact that their best one of their best hitters, Adoles Garcia, is out. Future Hall of Famer yeah. Max Scherzer is gone. For uh, sure. Dane Dunning, I think, left with uh, an apparent little injury there. Uh, he he exited when when Cody Bradford came on, so um, he he might be a little bit banged up. So you know there there are definitely some positive things going the Diamondbacks' way. You don't want to say positive is 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 someone on the other team getting injured, but with all those guys getting hits, 
the Rangers having to use LeClerc, uh, the Diamondbacks not using any of their primary relievers. So tomorrow when Zach Allen goes out there, if he doesn't have his best stuff, you can kind of utilize Thompson, Ginkle, and Seawald in the way that you were kind of thinking you might have used them today for four innings. So now Zach Gallen maybe only needs to get four and change. You throw out Mantiply, maybe you throw out Saul Frank, uh, Saul Frank, who got the final two outs, and that gets you through the fifth, and now you've got your bullpen to go and shove. So it almost makes the job a little bit easier for Zach Gallen to go out there and have some success and for the Diamondbacks to win game five at home. Uh, let's take a look at some of the Super Chats really fast, if you don't mind. Uh, I have not gotten those. Benjamin Hunley, thank you so much. He said, going down three to one and crushing everyone's faith in them and then winning three straight on the way to a World Series championship is exactly the type of thing the 2023 Diamondbacks it's would true. do. I mean, it's yeah, true. I mean, how, how many times have we lost faith in them this postseason? I'm sure not a lot of people even had faith in them when this postseason run started. I am definitely guilty of that. So uh, I understand. Peace of Yoshi, thank you for your super chat. He said, fire Tori for hugging Mad Dog. Yeah, that could be a fireable offense. Uh, normally, I'm not on board with his fire Fair. people kind of you know things, Fair. but that, that might be one for sure. Uh, Caesar, thank you for your super chat. He says, Walker turns the double play. We win seven to six. Time to whip out Joe Boo and say our prayers. Legacy game for Gallon coming up tomorrow. Ooh. Legacy game. Let's Caesar. go. That's true. I mean, yeah, Caesar. I, I, I concur that is a legacy game for zach allen tomorrow yeah, yeah legacy sure. yeah <laughs> shout out <laughs> don't do that. Hear that one. Don't shout out me. to ooh for ooh. sure uh for anyone going to the game tomorrow you have to turn into phillies fans especially against the clerk hopefully we do not see castro or Frias at all uh yeah i mean so getting tough yeah it's getting tough it's definitely like he's not wrong though you don't want like you you don't want to see Castro or Frias in tomorrow's game. You want to see Zach Gallon go strong. You want to see tea time Ryan Thompson. Tea time, tea time, tea time. Then you want to see, you know, Ginkle and Seawald. That's that's the plan. That's the blueprint. Caleb Lindsay says, Do you think it would have been more like seven to six D backs if Walker didn't jack up that potential double play? I don't know, guys. I mean, say. it's so hard to say, to be honest. That what really what it comes down to is there's no way to know if the Diamondbacks offense would have come alive like this if they weren't already down by a million runs, right? Uh, that's another Diamondbacks thing to do is 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 to be able to score runs when they don't really matter, but not enough to, you know, make the game interesting again. And, and to be fair, you could argue they did. I mean, seven to four does look it looks much or eleven to seven, excuse me, eleven to seven looks much better. Uh, after all is said and done, than the way this game yeah, right. actually went. But and, it, and it's and when you look and you say, oh, you know, I'll, you, you can just erase five runs from the board, but Simeon had a two RBI triple. He's still going to be, you know, in theory, like I mean, he's he's still him. He still has a certain approach against a Miguel Castro, so he's still going to triple in that spot. So yeah. that that might end up being a a, a run there at some point. And Seager with his two run home run, like. We know he's locked in right now, so all of a sudden, it's not like he's not going to hit a home run when he comes up to the plate, right? I gotta give a timeout to Thunderbolt. Um, do we have to timeout Thunderbolt? Thunderbolt, we can't. We there's Careful. enough to be angry about that's happened in the last two days. You don't need to make up new stuff that's going to happen in the future that we nah, don't know if it's going to happen. I'm in the same yet. spot. No, Seawald has me in my feelings right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. It should be two two. I know, I know it should, but of course, uh, we have uh, the one guy that can potentially get us out of this funk right now arguably i don't know maybe we'll see no not jesse oh, jesse okay, does sorry. jesse just makes me angrier i don't know if you <laughs> knew that but it's jerry p uh and jerry oh. p is in the clubhouse saying the bats need to start the way uh the last five innings went and i don't think that any of us are going to argue with that notion you know that's how we're supposed to uh to do um we need to start tomorrow again like like the last four innings you know um but like i say it, it is what it is we have to turn the, pa the page and Come by strong tomorrow. Yeah, he was nice there uh, in uh, in the ninth, where Jordan Jeffrey Joseph Lawler <laughs> finally you know got his second plate appearance of the he postseason. Did. He walks, and then what he does did. Perdomo do? Immediately singles, and yep. then uh, defensive indifferences. Can we use that as a verb? Defensive indifferences, indifferences to second. Is way to I second. think that's yeah. how you would write that up. Yeah, yes. I think so. He was like, I, he said, Coach. He said, Hey, Dave, Coach Dave. Watch me defensive indifference. I'm going. Bet I won't defensive yeah. indifference. Watch me. I'm going to defensive indifference the hell he out of this. He eyes right his now. way to second base. Ooh, like, I like again, Perdomo <laughs> uh, in, in the middle of it once again. And, like, again, there, 
there is this, uh, you know, there's positivity and that you can kind of take from this. They don't go down without a fight. Again, they force Bochi to to use Leclerc, Leclerc, Moreno with the two RBI single late there. So all of these things, I think, are are positive and give you some momentum and say, <laughs> yeah, the, the final score is a little bit closer than uh, than than you might have thought it was uh, if you turned the game on but someone said fire Lavallo. this is for killer x said fire Lavallo. this is for, as far as he's gonna take the team one and four yeah, in the i World saw Series. killer x say that earlier i'm yeah. like you gotta be kidding me. what Come a on. loser that what a loser that tory Lavallo is the only guy did this underdog team all the way to the world series so let's get him out of here well uh they do have potentially like i said uh their backs against the wall well not potentially they do have their backs against the wall tomorrow uh in an all or nothing game uh, here we go with Jerry P firing us up uh, for that all or nothing mentality after a tough night. You know, it's, it's, it was hard for us. You know, it was tough. Um, um, it happens on time. Uh, I feel like our group plan was a little bit okay today. Uh, technically, he did a great job. He still does about it right there, but uh, it is what it is. You know, uh, we have to come strong tomorrow and we don't have Thursday. You know, it's all, all or nothing tomorrow. Uh, Geraldo Perdomo per Nick King set an MLB record for the most hits at 14 in a single postseason from the nine hole hitter. Unbelievable. They keep doing it. They keep doing it. But He's right impressive. now, right now it's not enough. They definitely no. need a little bit more uh, and they need it to come together. I mean, at one point they were over five, but I think runners in scoring position, they ended up two for seven, which absolutely isn't, uh, isn't great, but uh, better better than other nights they've had for sure. I think at this point what we just need to see is uh, some of those those at-bats strung together. You know, sure. really, that's that's really what we're seeing because tonight the the Rangers, again, the, the Diamondbacks out hit the Rangers 12 to 11 and the Rangers just had the far more effective hits. Of course, the home runs, a uh, big part of that, but the Diamondbacks just really couldn't feel like they, they couldn't, you know, get those hits uh, and connect them together and get no. those runs in. No, yeah, that's second game in a row that the Rangers had less hits and yet they won the game. So that's probably somewhat of a rarity. And it's just kind of strange too to 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 know like how well they were able to play in the second half. You know, if you if you you know, I, I can remember uh, during my playing days, the coach saying, "All right, hey, it's zero zero right now. Forget what the real score is. It's zero zero. Let's go out and win the rest of the game." Mm -hmm. And from from that ten zero. Uh, point in which you just would you 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 blinked and all of a sudden it the game was over. Okay, well from that point on it was seven one. So obviously not a victory in the the true win column. But you're like, all right, you know that was it was something good, but it wasn't good enough, right? That the bats were there. It was like pizza, but with spinach and peppers on it. You're like, it's good, it's pizza, but it's just it just misses the mark. And I know Max knows about that, you know, really well. And and when you have a loss like this. It it uh, it sucks because you just got beat. You just got beat. You just got beat. Yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> it, um, for sure. But uh, of course, uh, I will be having uh, Jesse Friedman join us here in a little bit. Uh, I am not. I'm still beside myself because yeah, you are. <laughs> uh, this was just a sad loss on Halloween, and I'm dressed like this, and I get. I think I'm making myself sadder by being dressed like this. But uh, <laughs> of course, uh, you can get yourself maybe a little Luigi. You know, bobblehead from our friends at Foco oh. to commemorate this. I don't know. They are the leading manufacturer of sports and entertainment merchandise. True. And they do have a product line that includes lots and lots of stuff, including apparel, accessories, toys, collectibles, hats. novelty items, hats, uh, Aloha shirts, straw hats, yeah. whatever you're looking They're for. They're pretty cool. Whatever helps you get over this. Mostly, get yourself some bobbleheads. Uh, baseball season is almost over, but that doesn't mean bobblehead season is over. So make sure to check out the limited edition bobbleheads they have right now for the World Series over at foco.com. They are incredible. And when I say a limited edition, they are uh, numbered uh, and they are uh, hand hand written on the bottom what number they are. So uh, check them out. They are little tiny uh, pieces of art. Foco does always have our back for Arizona sports and they have your back as well. Get the best gear around by visiting foco.com and using code PHNX for all non-presale items, use the code PHNX for 10% off. Uh, and yes, Joe Mama, I do have the L on my forehead. We already covered that earlier, but appreciate that. Uh, Some place that I also got the L was on BetMGM, where I tried my best Ooh. to reverse the curse with my bet. Sure. Uh, I don't think that worked out so well based on the results, but hopefully you can make some money over at BetMGM by placing your first 
sportsbook wager through the BetMGM Sportsbook mobile application of at least $10 and use our code of PHNX. If you do, you'll get yourself $200 instantly. It's just that easy. All you got to do is download the app on iOS or Android or visit their website at BetMGM.com. Sign up with code PHNX and then use uh, do, deposit at least $10 into your newly created account. And place a wager in that, that amount of $10 or more at a standard odds price. Once you have done so, you will receive $200 instantly in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your wager. So sign up today for BetMGM. Use bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM sportsbook wager through the mobile application of at least $10. You will receive $200 instantly in additional winnings regardless of your wager's outcome. Check out the show notes for full details and now listen to Shane talk about the disclaimer. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369-NEW YORK. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico, in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., New York, or Ontario. 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 You know what? You need to loosen things up a little bit. You got something for me? Yes. Pop off one of those overall straps. Unhook it. Unhook one. Is this one? Yeah. Pop that bad boy off. Yeah. Oh, that guy? Let it hang. That's what's up. Now Luigi's in a boy band in the early 90s, mostly R&B. One member of the group does rap. Is it you? Am I the bad boy? You kind of a, am I the, the heartthrob? <laughs> yeah, I don't are you know. are you the kind of uh, <laughs> boy in a boy band that would dye his hair purple? Are you that oh, kind of boy? Oh, why does it have to be like that? I don't know why it has yeah, to be you like are. that. I am kind of like that. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> do we have any more videos from the clubhouse yet, there, Damon? No, not quite. Not yet. Um, Just replay the Jerry Perdomo one because that guy really. I mean, he's a special player, and I get it. It's out of the nine hole, but still, I just think they are. Not franchise players or cornerstone players. They are just cogs that you need to be successful. And the fact that, you know, the Diamondbacks have him for a while to go. Or, again, there's a lot of teams out there in baseball right now that I'm sure probably trying to contact Mike Hayes and saying, look, you got no. Jordan Lawler no. in the pipeline. Uh -uh. Maybe trade. I mean, look, I just saying, maybe. Get out of here. All, go all back I'm to saying Denver. is he's solidified himself go back as a go, staple. Go. Yeah. This season, he solidified himself as a staple. Absolutely. If, if you say otherwise, then, then nothing matters. Yeah. Because Imagine, he's an all-star. He's helped yes. us win postseason games. He's the catalyst for this team. Untradeable. Don't talk at me. Don't talk at me like I'm not a Jerry P appreciator. You just want him on the Rockies, dude. That's, we've we've that's, got some headaches. That's what it is. You son of a bitch. No. You're trying to get us to give them to your team. We will trade you a dinosaur. Uh, I don't want that. Costume. I don't want any of that. A well, dinosaur playing with Baxter? That sounds like a lot of fun. Dinger it's is better adorable. than shortstop. Susie's going to be furious that you're treating Dinger. Here's a, here's a, here's a little thing, though. <laughs> when you see Dinger, you just can't say his name. Why? Uh, I You just can't shout it. I just Because bad things can happen. We'll talk about it off air. Oh. You just can't shout his name out loud. You don't remember that little scandal oh, from last year? Yeah, I do now. You can't. I you do just now. don't say it. Just I do don't. now. I just do appreciate now. Okay. point. Wave to yeah, the dinosaur. Yeah, no, you're right. But maybe, Jerry P is, maybe he is, just, a new is name. great. I mean, I, I could know. even see him if, with Lawler at shortstop. If if Perdomo is maybe sliding over to third base, does he play a little outfield too and, and keep him in the lineup every day if, if you have another third base option? like I think he's a versatile kind of guy. Right with his athleticism, it's it's pretty impressive. Yeah. Hold on, I'm I'm go I'm gonna lose my mind. When were we blaming fans? Can you tell me? Can you can you backtrack well, did, that? Didn't you uh, courtroom do that stenographer? I don't know. Like people are. Were we talking about the airplanes? Yeah. When you guys yeah, don't about the fucking throw fucking airplanes. That's fucking common goddamn sense. What? How is that blaming the fans? That doesn't. That's mean the literally fans are the telling reason. you not to throw fucking paper airplanes and be a, be classless. I get it. You're bored. It's pretty shitty to start throwing things, uh, especially during a championship game. You know, have some yeah. class. That's not blaming the fans. That was a separate topic. That's saying that I understand fans were upset. I understand that they were bored, especially when the game was 10 to nothing and there wasn't anything going on. But I, I at no point was I blaming the fans for that. I was just saying, like, if, if fans started pelting players with batteries, that would also be terrible. This isn't nearly as bad as that, but it's also still one of those things that 
and I hate to be a schoolroom teacher about this, <laughs> you could put someone's goddamn eye out. Can we not? Like, it doesn't seem that hard to ask Very people true. to behave themselves at a sporting event. But and I, and I anyway, that was the whole thing. And I don't like the idea of someone saying, well, but if you're, when you're throwing it, everyone's eyes are face forward. Don't people like turn their head to the right <laughs> to look at things or to talk to somebody? So, yes. Oh, wait. Are people blaming silly. Espo? Because Jay says people are blaming Espo, and I'm totally on board with that. I just, people are trying to blame Espo. That's different. Uh, well, that's not blaming the fans. That's blaming Espo. You could also blame Anthony Totry, who was not here at PHNX HQ. Nowhere to be HQ. found. Nowhere to be found. MIA. The last two nights, not standing in his spot. That it's Anthony underscore Totri. His last name is spelled T-O-T-R-I. Wow, you you're doxing that. people now? No, I'm not doxing them. I'm just letting <laughs> them know that if they wanted to blame somebody, we can all get we we can all get together and blame Totri. But uh, I think Piece of Yoshi said it uh, best here. He said, "We're facing a good team. Shit happens." I mean, it feels a lot like when they were facing the Phillies, right? The Phillies are a very good team. Uh, their pitchers were dominating us. Their hitters were bullying our pitchers and yet somehow the diamondbacks found a way to adapt and win the phillies didn't and that was the only thing i think that allowed the diamondbacks to get you know past them is is the ability to adapt whereas the phillies kind of stuck to their game plan and the diamondbacks found a way to win you know regarding and that's the reason why tory deserve, deserves credit uh for that series win uh but right now what we're seeing is is the rangers essentially be the better better team even when they're missing now one yeah. of their one of their main offensive weapons like i said earlier they they his replacement was still able to come in and and give one of the best offensive performances of the night they're a yeah. deep team they're a good team you got to tip your cap to them but honestly the you know the the whole bullpen start thing it's just it felt like eventually it was going to catch up you know it's kind of like you know andrew saul frank and ryan thompson like we spent the entire from the time that they you know started throwing you know going out there and putting up scoreless outings uh to the end of the season we just kind of felt like we were like on the edge of our seat a little bit with each one of those yeah. because as good as they were it felt like oh man when's like when's the other shoe gonna drop right and so i feel like tonight was that case for these bullpen starts that tory has been able to utilize and, and get through not only the end of the po regular season but through the postseason up to this point he's only had to do it one time but still positive results there. Not so much tonight. No, no. And, and that's that's just the name of the game when you you only have three reliable starting pitchers and, you know, you don't go out at the trade deadline like, you know, you know maybe Hazen kind of really needed to do. That would seem like the one area that they weren't able to shore up and they didn't do that because they didn't want to mortgage the future because yeah. look how great this core is. Let's not split them up. Let's utilize some of those other pieces that are coming up through the pipeline to uh, to have an even better chance to win it all. Now you look and go, oh, we we actually had the pieces right now, and so you probably would have gone back and mortgaged a little of the future to have that number four starter, so you didn't have to worry about bullpen games. But you know the series isn't over. You know they, they're the, they're the answer backs for a reason. It's three one. If anyone can you know win the final three games of a World Series, it's it's this exact team here right now. Zach Gallen, he's. He's been okay. Yeah. He's due to, even if he's just okay, he's due to be okay. Yeah. He's due to be great. He is. But he's just great. due to be okay. Your bullpen's there and can win it. Yep. Then you've got the mainstay in game six. And then Brandon fought against, I don't know who they would even throw out there at game seven. And that bullpen's going to be pretty taxed. Sean it's Gray. a game of chess. It's a game of chess. And right now it does look like Tori Lavelle doesn't have all the right pieces. But until that king is knocked over, yeah. They're alive. Yeah, snakes that's, and alive. That's, that's the truth. That's the truth of it. Is really, uh, like Perdomo said, if they can find a way to to get that offense that we saw there late started early, which has been a problem so far. You know that it really impacts their ability to to you know positively think about this game. I, I still am skeptical to think that they could have scored this many runs in this game if they weren't already behind. But maybe the fact that they have nothing to lose, maybe I don't know. I, I this team at times has absolutely uh shocked me when like I said when when they went out there and it seemed like everything was against them. Uh they were this was the first game that they were the favorite betting odds wise <laughs> to win. So of course, uh this is right? how this goes. Uh so maybe once they're the underdog again, we can see this team get back to their roots because we still didn't really see them doing a whole lot of, you know, 
getting guys on, moving them over, a lot of base running stuff that they're known known for. But uh, yeah, I but mean, they I, answered they answered back for six runs in the eighth and the ninth. They did. It was you impressive. go. Oh, they're, they're meaningless. Not to them. Not for their momentum. Not, not for their psyche. You're right. Yeah. Saying like, man, the last time I was up at the plate. I got a, I got a two RBI double, you know, for mm -hmm. for Gabby Moreno. A lot of those guys are going to have that story, and they're going to take that with them into Game Five. Which, sure, they lost Game Four, you know, pretty badly here. It was it wasn't as close as the eleven seven score would suggest. Definitely. Not. That being said, you'd rather have that positive outcome in your last plate appearance than just the the stench of a ten nothing or eleven to one loss. And you know, you get completely shut down your last one or two plate appearances. So again. Silver lining, uh, loser talk. I don't know about that. It's just the reality of things for a team that has done nothing but answer back it's, in situations like this for the entire month. It's kind of like our guy, you know, Thunderbolt, who loses his mind after every single loss saying that, you know, we're making excuses. We're not making excuses. We're just talking about how this game could have gone otherwise. It's just like in the same concept that we're not saying what if, what if, what if, but that's that's what kind of what we do we we analyze how the game went and gotta talk about something we got to talk about uh you know if if things went differently like if ryan nelson would have started how would this have gone you never know because we don't live in that reality like i said i i'm still like i said i still don't know how things would have gone with this offense if this was let's say a, a four-run game like maybe maybe they only score three runs and it's they're up three nothing they get one back it's a three one ga one game do you know, does the offense still show up late like it does and score six runs? And, you know, who knows? I don't really know. There's in, no way to know that. In the multiverse, there's a place where the Diamondbacks just there's. clinched tonight. They just won the World Series in game four. Yeah. In the multiverse. Uh, <laughs> I like our new friend Krishna, I think, who is a self-proclaimed Rangers fan. He came in earlier and said something nice about, uh, I think he said, like, this is going to be a good series. And I appreciate that. I always love, uh, always love chopping it up. I even love the trash talking from our opposing fans so you guys are always welcome here he said as a rangers fan this has been a great series and still anyone can take it so best of luck y'all and then said i say uh i will say though the rangers are 10 and 0 on the road this postseason True. that's such a big factor and they stay undefeated he said which could be a trend broken tomorrow but we'll see best of luck tomorrow and yes best of luck to you uh but not tomorrow we don't hope you the best wish you the best of luck uh, maybe after the series is over, we'll wish you the best of luck. But, uh, yeah, of course, uh, we do have the opener of this game, Joe Mantiply, uh, on talking about this game not going their way. And, obviously, sometimes that's the case. Um, I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, I just try to focus on doing my job and, and getting the guys out that I need to get out and um, just pass the baton to the next guy. Um, and, you know, I've got faith in everybody in our bullpen and have all year and, um, but you know, sometimes this game just doesn't go your way. Um, tonight was seems like one of those nights. It definitely was. It definitely was one of those nights. Um, we also have Christian Walker. We know he had that uh, rough defensive uh, mistake, but uh, here he is talking about battling every pitch in Game Five. Yeah, it's gonna be a battle. You know, there's one thing I can promise is, you know, we're gonna uh, we're gonna fight as hard as we can every pitch. Um, you know, we've had our backs up against the wall before. A little bit different. Uh, we have every scenario is different, but um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna leave it all on the field. I mean, obviously, uh, and I think that you know, especially being here at home, uh, I think that there is more than just the loss, right? Like people are gonna love that sound bite. I bet that sound bite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Well, I mean, let's be honest, though. I mean, they're they're definitely you know that things don't look great. Like I said. This is a similar position that they were in against the Phillies where it did seem like there was no way that this was going to happen. When yeah. they when they went down 3-2 and essentially had to go back to Philadelphia and win two games in a row, that seemed as impossible as this. It, it Maybe even more so, but maybe because they did that, we believe that this team can definitely turn things around. And uh, until they are out of it, they did not uh, – they, they're, they're not done. What are you laughing about over there? That I was 100% right. <laughs> about what? people not liking that walk oh sound yeah no i mean yeah of course you're gonna get that uh for sure but on a day in which you had three hits but yes did make uh did make the error there the 11 runs by the texas rangers most in a world series game since the nationals scored 12 in 2019 and they won the world series that year what do you think 
That's what, that. <laughs> what do you think? I know you're not a fan, but you have kind of you're a pseudo fan. You, you're you're we've fan of the game, of we've course. Grown you into a little bit of a fan of this team. Sure, and, I very much enjoy watching the Diamondbacks this postseason, yeah, no doubt. I mean, and I know you've been pretty optimistic about their chances because it's baseball, right? But I mean, so far, the, have the Rangers done anything to you that like? I don't know. I mean, I, I felt like again going back to the Philly series, there were times where the Phillies looked far more dominant you know than the rangers have so far in this in this series and it's not taking anything away from them but like again i mean i I still feel like the diamondbacks have a chance here but somehow here we sit at at elimination point yeah i wouldn't even say that i'm optimistic but i get where you're coming from because i'm just not pessimistic right just kind of a little bit neutral and just kind of maybe trying to read the tea leaves and not being too hot about Christian Walker because uh, it seemed like he was about to break out at the plate a little bit and knowing there weren't really any other options. And so it's just the that, that I guess, sense of optimism just comes from the fact that, you know, you play the games and for some reason the Diamondbacks just have been finding a way to win so many of these ball games every time when it seems like they shouldn't win. And every time it seems like they should, like yesterday and today, they lose. Yeah. And so... Yeah. You know, I don't know how I'm going to feel necessarily the going vibes in tomorrow. Were so perfect yesterday, weren't they? Like we Nathan were out Eovaldi, there. The vibes were so good. Nathan Eovaldi, you got to think is ready to go out there and close this series out. Yeah. And as bad as Zach Gallen has been, or as mediocre as he's been, it definitely looks geared up for the Rangers to just finish this bad boy. Yeah. Which means the Diamondbacks are actually going to win. <laughs> that, that, you know, that's how that works. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, I, I'm just not totally pessimistic. You just kind of have to wait. And see how these things go. It's easy to be, you know, an armchair quarterback and say, "Well, do this, do that." But at the same time, uh, if Tori Lavello didn't manage this team the way he's been through the entire month of October, they simply wouldn't have gone this far in the first place. So, yeah. sort of willing to defer to him and say, "If if they are the better team, if they are going to win this World Series, it will be because of the moves Terry Lavello makes and the performance of the players he- to this point." And Seawald blowing that save—that's not. Uh, Tory, you know, having made yeah. a mistake, that's just uh, his his, uh, his guy not performing there in that spot. You could say the same thing about game four. And uh, there's still, you know, the chance for three more games here going forward. And might as well just stick with my pick, Diamondbacks in seven, right? It's it's much more of a longer shot, right? A 15% chance sure to come is. back down 3-1. Well, let's, why not? But there's still a chance, why not right? Us? There's why still not a chance. Us? Let's <laughs> take a look uh, real fast at some of those uh, Super Chats. Uh, I'm just going to call you Doug. Doug said the lucky charm is Bruce Bochy rather face dusty and the hated Astros. I would have too, just so we could have firmly been the good guys, the baby face in this matchup. Uh-huh. Uh, Doug says we need a miracle. Now we absolutely do. Uh, Tyler Lane says, forget about, uh, the Lavello haters. He will become the greatest manager in D backs history with a three, one comeback. Ooh. And I'll say, honestly, even if they don't, he might still be in consideration for that, uh, very prestigious nomination, That's but, right. Uh, one guy who's here to be optimistic about their chances, I hope, is the one and only Thunderstick Jesse Friedman coming to us live from Chase Field. Uh, Jesse, obviously a terrible, terrible night uh, that was rectified a bit by the offense coming alive in the late innings. But what are your thoughts overall on tonight's 11-7 to loss? 10 nothing is tough, man. Uh, once you're Once you're down 10 nothing. You don't have much of a chance to come back yeah. and win that game. And <laughs> kind of uh, that simple, right? <laughs> ten nothing is that nothing? They used to call those games simple. back in little league days. They just say it was over <laughs> after the third. We would have all gone home and had orange slices. Lord Escurial Jr. did say after this game. I mean, you know, his, his mindset in that situation, as you'd expect, was okay. If the Rangers can go up ten nothing, then you know we can hang with these guys. We have the ability to come back and, and score ten runs as well. But yeah, in practice, that's that's really hard to pull off, right? Like once you're down 10 nothing in the third inning, you have to outscore the Rangers by 11 runs the remainder of the game in order to, in order to win. That's just really really hard to do. And yeah, the Diamondbacks did uh show some resistance uh late in this game, right? They got they got seven runs on the board. Maybe even more importantly, they got Jose Leclerc in the game in a decision that I honestly thought was like kind of hilarious. Uh <laughs> right? Bruce Bochi uh you know second and third two outs there's one more out to get in the ninth inning 
and the Rangers are up six runs. I get that there's two guys on base, but the Diamondbacks <laughs> could have hit three consecutive home runs against Will Smith, and the Rangers still would have had the lead yeah. uh, with with only one more out to get. So, yeah, it seemed, uh, yeah, but it, it seemed a little excessive to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Bruce Bochy certainly wanted to be cautious and that that did play into the Diamondbacks' favor. Leclerc has now pitched on back-to-back -back days and certainly didn't work hard in this one. But you figure maybe that works in your favor going into tomorrow. Maybe uh, I, I imagine he'd still be available, but maybe maybe Leclerc, if he has to pitch in that game, isn't isn't quite as sharp as he otherwise would have been. But yeah, I mean, again for the Diamondbacks, this game came down to you know a few a few key mistakes, and I, I guess the biggest one here is Christian Walker unable to turn what appeared to be a, a tailor-made double play in that third inning. Uh, would have ended the inning. The Rangers would not have scored in that inning. Uh, but instead, he's not able to make that play. The bases are loaded with one out. The Rangers go on to score, you know, not just a couple runs, but five runs in, in that third, adding on to five runs in the second. I know Gabby Moreno also in, in that second inning, you know, there was a, a wild pitch. That's how the, the Rangers scored. Their first run of the game on a wild pitch from Miguel Castro. Gabby Moreno wasn't able to get a handle on that ball. I'm not sure if he really would have legitimately had a play there. Um, so that that one is is maybe less important. You know, I think the Rangers just just I mean they were just sort of able to ambush the Diamondbacks bullpen in that second inning. But yeah, yeah, like I said from the top, when, once you're down ten nothing, that's a it's a really tough spot to be. And the Diamondbacks, of course, now have their backs against the wall. Yeah, and, and that run still would have ended up scoring, uh, even if it was not yeah. for the wild pitch. So, um, it, it's almost moved. It, it's funny because the you know the, the quote from like you just said from from Guriel, and and we heard some words from Christian Walker, and it's like, oh, that's so cheesy. You don't want to hear that. I think you do. I think it's that kind of mentality that's gotten the Diamondbacks here in the first place. Yeah. Again, as cheesy as it is, you have to have that kind of belief that you can put those things behind you or reframe the context of the situation, then say, wow, we suck. Yeah. That guy made a mistake. Yeah. He sucks. That's, that's passing the buck. That doesn't work. You have to have that kind of, you know, Tony Robbins type of mentality well, it's, of, it's, Hey, we are, we do belong here. And there's sincerity to it, yeah. right? Like yeah. sometimes when people say stuff like that and are sincere, it's hard for the rest of us, very cynical people to <laughs> accept that, the, they're, they're trying to keep a good mindset, a positive mindset, and you know keep things, keep themselves motivated and focused on the ultimate goal, which is this is not over yet. They have another baseball game to play tomorrow. Yeah, real quick, what what I was saying on the wild pitch, theoretically, if Gabby Moreno gets the out at home on that play, the inning stops right there. Um, but yes, if if you know if they're not able to get that out, the inning plays out, and of course, yeah, that run scores no matter what, and the wild pitch doesn't matter. But yeah, to to what you're saying, um, yeah, I mean, uh, this is a this is obviously a difficult situation for the Diamondbacks, but they've sort of made a season out of coming back from difficult situations, right? I mean, people didn't expect this team to be in the playoffs. People didn't expect this team to beat the Milwaukee Brewers in the first round, or the Dodgers in the second round, or the Phillies in the third round. So, you know, I think there's some sense here that the Diamondbacks have been in, in similar spots before and they've, you know, they've found their way out of it. This is the toughest one, though. I mean, down 3-1, yeah. this is this is the yeah. toughest spot that this team for for, you know, how, how long of odds this team has faced at certain points this season. This is the most difficult position they've been in. And yeah, I mean, tomorrow, Zach Gallon is on the mound and the Diamondbacks need Zach Gallon to be Zach Gallon. And he hasn't really looked like that guy for a while. Yeah. Apparently, we lost to the Spurs <laughs> on top of this, Jesse. So it's just a terrible night right that, now. That, being that track. That. When we started this show, they were up by 20. I just want to point that out. Go ahead. Do, do you feel it's easier for Zach Gallon to be Zach Gallon tomorrow because he doesn't have to be Zach Gallon? To rephrase that, it's basically because you've got Thompson, Ginkle, and Seawald to go seventh, eighth, ninth, maybe even sixth through the ninth inning. Uh, you sprinkle someone else in there like a Mantiplier or, or Saul Frank that Zach Gallon can really like empty the tank and and almost set him up for that same success that Brandon Fott had, you know, a couple times through of like, look, just go through the order two times, empty it out, go nuts and and don't don't start thinking about pitching to the sixth or seventh like Merrill Kelly did. Just just keep it almost simple and hand it off to the bullpen because they'll take it from there. They are very well rested. I feel like that increases the likelihood for Zach Allen to have that kind of success because he certainly doesn't need to put the team on his back in any shape or form. 
Yeah, that's fair. I mean, right. There isn't, there isn't a, a game immediately after that, if the diamondbacks are able to extend this series. So you do have a bullpen that's, that's pretty, at least the, you know, the high leverage guys are, are pretty well gassed up and you're not afraid to, to push them a little bit with the off day coming after. But yeah, you know, I mean, I don't think Zach Gallen is going to go into that start, even with a gassed up bullpen planning on, on going through the lineup twice or, you know, five innings or whatever, like, the Diamondbacks do kind of need Zach Gallon to to put this team on on his back a little bit, and that's just something that we haven't really seen in a while, right? I know he was, you know, he bounced back from a really rough first inning in that Brewers start, and and was able to pitch pretty well in that game for the Diamondbacks, helped them win that game, pitched pretty well in that game against the Dodgers uh, in his start there, even though that was a pretty short leash. But you know, those two starts against the Phillies, the one start he's made here against the Rangers. He hasn't really looked like the pitcher that, that we saw in the regular season. And that's really big. I mean, that's if the Diamondbacks lose tomorrow and they lose the World Series with Zach Gallon on the mound, it, I think it's very possible that the narrative is going to kind of be the Diamondbacks, you know, had this great run in the postseason, but their ace didn't pitch like an ace. Their ace, you know, had a six ERA in the playoffs and uh, you know, the D-backs are two and three with him on the mound going into tomorrow's game. If it's two and four, that, that's going to be tough, you know, for for those, for them to get those kind of results with their best pitcher on the mound. Uh, M2, the world with the most loser mentality I've ever seen. He said one more game until the Phillies fans can celebrate. Go Rangers. Interesting. I, I <laughs> that. That is the wildest take I've yeah, ever heard. Yeah, that's loser talk. So enjoy, enjoy, <laughs> enjoy that. Enjoy whatever the hell yeah. that does for you. But, From Cancun. Uh, yeah, enjoy your time off or whatever the hell. I mean, you're if doing. you're if you're a Phillies fan, though, is it really a great look for you if the Diamondbacks get crushed in the World Series? Like, what does that say about the Phillies if the yeah. Diamondbacks who yeah. beat the Phillies? You guys go would have gotten World swept, is what that says. Yeah. <laughs> that absolutely <laughs> says that. I don't, to I don't me. see the I don't see the logic there. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, did um did Tori or Ryan Nelson say anything about you know the the great performance that he had uh, out there five and a third innings pitch only gave up uh, one home run the or one run the 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 solo shot to Jonah Heim didn't walk any struck out six uh, in a relief performance uh, we haven't seen in the World Series since Game Seven with Madison Bumgarner in, in 2014 oddly enough uh, his teammate but did any of them uh, and, and it would have been more from Tori like kind of express some second guessing of like man we we maybe we should have seen this guy capable of, of doing something like this if we had to do it over again we would have or not necessarily because you know sometimes guys just have uh, a team's number and it it just really wasn't expected and, and no one could have expected it to, to have happened did did either of those two you know say anything on on that subject yeah tori was asked the the inevitable you know hindsight is 2020 question your first few guys out of the bullpen didn't pitch real well. And then he brought in this guy who who could have been your fourth starter in this series. And he, you know, he shoves for five, five and a third innings. Tori basically said, you know, uh, Ryan Nelson just wasn't, he just wasn't going to be that guy in the series based on the way that he performed in his first two outings. I think he's had two outings so far in the postseason coming into this. And he just didn't pitch like a guy who is, who is, you know, ready for an opportunity like this. So, you know, Tori said that the Diamondbacks were looking for, you know, Ryan to kind of come in in a lower leverage spot and sort of get his confidence back. And this game was very much that. Like, if, if that's what you're looking for, that's exactly what this game was. Ryan Nelson really did pitch well. And Tori emphasized that in his post game presser, how big, uh, how big it was for Ryan Nelson to come in and and throw and pitch as deep into this game as he did. The Diamondbacks did not expect Ryan Nelson to be able to give him give them the kind of length that he was able to just given how long it's been since Nelson has pitched, uh, especially this deep into a game. It's been a number of weeks at this point. So that was really big. And, you know, making sure the D-backs didn't have to use Thompson or Ginkle or Seawald in this game. But yeah, at the end of the day, you know, you can't, you can't necessarily equate what Ryan Nelson did in this game with what he would have done if he had started it. It's just sure. different when you're coming into a blowout it's just different. I you, you kind of get the sense Rangers hitters maybe aren't quite as locked in yeah. when they're sitting on a ten run yeah. lead. So that's you know it, that's I, something I, we, I don't know what to do with that. that. No, that's something we were talking about though because it's very much it it is. I mean, you you cannot say this game would have gone at all 
the way it did in the late innings based on the fact that the Rangers were up 10 to nothing. That completely changes the mindset for players on both sides of, of the ball. And honestly, it, it, you, like, like I said, you can't just assume the Di- Diamondbacks would have gone on to score the six runs late because they're notorious yeah. for doing this. They're notorious for putting up runs in games that it didn't matter uh, when their offense was struggling prior to that and, and, <laughs> and, and looking like things are back on track. But really, it was just yeah. the pressure being off and us hitting the ball. Uh, but we do have yeah, Brian well, Nelson. And, and the, the, oh, Rangers, the Rangers aren't using their, their best relievers, right? If this yeah. is a close game, the Rangers Fair. aren't going completely to, different. You know, yeah, it's a completely different work game. In the, in the ninth inning, yeah. Yeah, but here's Ryan Nelson on saving the back end of the bullpen because he went those five innings. We didn't have to throw Thompson, Ginkle, or Seawald. I think it was just them and Saul Frank down there at the end of it. So if I wasn't able to go more than two or three, they they would have had to throw because we wouldn't have had anybody else. But, yeah, I, th- I think that it, it could set us up for tomorrow for sure. Uh, I just, like I said, I just wanted to do what I could to save those guys and keep them from going into that ball game. Yep, and that's exactly what he did, and that's what they needed him to do tonight. Because even though it's like a, it was like a sacrifice in a way, like we just we just need to get through this game, and we <laughs> need to not use arms that we potentially need for high leverage situations going forward. But yeah, uh, Jesse, we also do have Christian Walker here talking about Zach Gallon going tomorrow, and uh, obviously, I know there is a lot of belief in the clubhouse in in Zach Gallon. Here's what Walker had to say. Yeah, another guy that I'm betting on all day, every day, with our backs up against the wall. You know, he's my guy. He's he's, he's our guy. Um, nothing but confidence, nothing but faith in him. Um, like I said, one thing I can promise is is we're going to show up, we're going to prepare, and we're going to leave it on the field. I mean, you know, it's funny because like you addressed earlier, Zach Gallon is a guy that if you would have asked us at any point during the regular season, that's that's the guy we want. You know, you would say like, yeah, I feel comfortable about Merrill being in there, but Zach Gallon is probably the guy I want to hand that ball off to. And, yeah, he hasn't had some great performances. Honestly, he hasn't looked dominant since that complete game. I think he had a completely game shutout in uh, in Chicago against the Cubs uh, at Wrigley Field during the regular season. Uh, but, I mean, what, whatever the case may be, like he hasn't had a really great start uh, in, in probably over a month. I know a lot of that probably has to do with just being a bit out of gas here, you know, and pitching longer than he's ever had to pitch before yeah. in his career. But it really does feel like, you know the Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks need him to come out and and look like we've seen him look at home during the regular season uh, tomorrow night to give them a chance. Yeah, and I mean the the D backs, even though they they didn't win that first game, right, with Zach Gallon on the mound against Nathan Eovaldi, but they were in really good position too. Right, yeah, that was the game that sure. you know the back end of the bullpen just just wasn't able to hold things down at the end. It goes to extra innings. The backs ultimately lose six five, but Zach Gallon did, even though he wasn't great in the game, he did outpitch Nathan Eovaldi. The Diamondbacks were able to get to Nathan Eovaldi pretty early in that game, even though I think he still had eight strikeouts. And in game two, right? I mean, Merrill Kelly against Jordan Montgomery, that was a pretty heavy advantage. Diamondbacks, uh, game three, right? Brandon fought on the mound. We saw what that looked like yesterday, and didn't turn into a win for the Diamondbacks. But it's also, you know, uh, it's also a pitching matchup against. Then it was Max Scherzer. I guess we'll find out exactly what that looks like if we get there. But it's a pitching matchup that also is, is you know, may, maybe not in the Diamondbacks' favor, but at least pretty even. So the D-backs don't need another bullpen game. There are there are no more bullpen games. That's what uh, I said. Yeah, know, we're done with ahead those. Of them, ahead of them in the series. But, you know, you still have to find a way to win all three of these next games, you know, if you're able to, to kind of keep this thing going. So, uh, you know, even with some of those advantages, it's obviously a, a tall task. One right. game at a time. Oh, one game at a time. Well, Jesse, we will see you tomorrow uh, for what could be the final day of the Yoffs for this wagon, <sighs> but Ooh. hopefully not. Hopefully we will get to put you on a Greyhound bus and send you back to Texas before it's all said <laughs> and done. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Thank you so much for all of your work. Yeah, guys. See ya. All right. Um, well, of course, you guys know that you can still support this wagon. Grab yourself the t-shirt of a fucking dangerous team over at the phnxlocker.com. Uh, get that t-shirt today. If you're a diehard member, you'll get 20% off. If you are not a diehard member, you can join us today. You'll get that shirt for free. You also get 20% off all future purchases and so much more. Check out the entire selection of playoff season shirts 
that they have uh, over here at the phnxlocker.com. Uh, awesome, awesome selection of shirts. Of course, if you are a diehard member, you also get Jesse's newsletter, get access to our members-only Discord, uh, Discord lounge, which is the best place to be an Arizona sports fan, and so much more. Uh, discount off future purchases, get members-only invites to events, members-only merch. So join us today and become part of the PHNX family. Also, stop by Circle K, uh, which is a great place to refresh your voice as you hear mine is about to completely give out on me. But, <laughs> of course, uh, right now, if you join their Inner Circle membership program for free, uh, you can get all sorts of discounts, including 25 cents off per gallon for your first five Phillips of gas. I used that just today, and it was a lifesaver because uh, my car doesn't, like, it has digital stuff, so it's easy just to ignore it. And then I look, and it told me uh, that you had eight miles left of gas. You know? What are you doing? Why are you I running on E? I don't know. I don't know. It's because it all just blends together, and oh. it tells me, like, the miles that I've left. I don't even pay attention to the little gas gauge anymore. I just look at how many miles I've left. And today I was like, oh, eight. That's like with all this thing screams at me when I take my hands off the wheel for a second. You would have thought that they would have been like in DEFCON 5 mode warning me that you're about to run out of gas, idiot. Like none of that. It just let me drive. You need an update where it just tells you when to go to Circle K. That's the thing. And it just you the light do. goes on. A little then, Circle K logo. Yeah. And it just Circle tells K, you yeah. to drop, stop yeah. off. There you go. Now and you it don't can, have to it can work all. not just for gas, but when I need a monster too. Like you it know? knows you need some of those yeah. musky barbecue chips oh, that are so good. good. They're so good. Uh, but also you'll get some of those chips for free when you download the app Ooh. you'll get all sorts of stuff for free they'll send you coupons you'll get buy five gets and six one free on a selection of circle k products like pizza coffee and those ice cold fountain drinks so join the inner circle for free by downloading the circle k app terms and conditions apply at participating locations visit circle k.com for details i heard um, circle k only puts uh like real toppings on their pizzas as well yeah Oh, uh, wrong DEFCON. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I don't I don't yeah. know my DEFCONs. I, I apologize <laughs> for not knowing my DEFCON. So, uh, but we will see you guys tomorrow. We appreciate you guys, of course, for being here right now. Of course, uh, you can follow us on Twitter. I am at cap underscore caveman with a K. This absolute maniac is at Patrick D. Lyons. Uh, Damon, I don't know if you want to follow him tonight. It's probably best to just avoid him at all costs just leave me alone he's still the people's producer uh he's wearing sunglasses he's got the snake on him it's that's a whole thing but uh you can get him at damon dog and man. regardless whether he has a soul or not uh we're still damon's dogs woof, woof woof uh we thank you guys of course we're also your dog don't forget and we're tommy fam's dog but um also make sure uh to jo uh, follow our show phnx underscore dbacks uh, and of course all roads do lead to at phnx underscore sports on twitter instagram and facebook we thank you guys again so much for your time we will be back here tomorrow uh for game number five of the world series hopefully the arizona diamondbacks can get it done we thank you again for your time and remember kids baseball is fun but it's so much more fun when you don't give up 10 runs in two innings. We all city like the mayor. 